Today I'm going to cover how to create a stall number or letter, as is in my case. First things first, we need to go over our materials list. Depending on the type of stall number or letter that you create, you may be using different materials, but these are the materials that I use to create mine for this example. The first thing we'll need is several wood letters. I picked these up from a local craft store. I think they were about $3 each. We'll also use some scrapbooking paper, a pencil, scissors. We would actually need two foam brushes. Here's one. A credit card or some kind of hard surface to smooth out wrinkles. Mod Podge. You can also make this uh, using Elmer's glue half and half with water, but I prefer the name brand. And some sort of stain. This is Provincial by Minwax and it happens to be my favorite. So let's get started. To get started, the first thing that we're going to need is one sheet of scrap paper. What we're going to do is flip this scrap paper over and trace out our letter using the pencil. Now if you have a pattern with any particular shape to it or grain, you'll want to make sure to line that up. In this case it doesn't matter too much. I always like to start off on the edge. It leaves me less to cut. And so I'll just line this up on the paper. And then I'll grab my pencil. And just trace around the edges. The next step is to actually cut out the letter. Now this is pretty basic, we'll just cut along the lines. Shapes with holes in them such as the A, the D, the O can be a little bit tricky, but a smaller pair of scissors usually does the trick. I think you get the idea here, once the letter is completely cut out, we'll have something that looks like these. Here I have A, A, B, and C. And here on A, you may be able to see where this particular paper had a motif, and I had wanted that lined up on the left-hand side of the letter and so I made sure that when I traced it that I traced it correctly so that would happen. Alright, the next step is to get our unfinished letter and stain it. Now I chose to stain mine even though they'll be covered with scrapbooking paper so that when viewed from the back or even along the edge that you wouldn't be able to see an unfinished surface. This is totally up to you. You could even use white paint, colored paint. Uh, in fact, you could even skip scrapbooking altogether and just paint the letter to your staple colors. In this case, I use Minwax Provincial. And all I did was use a foam applicator, apply a light coat, and take an old rag, wipe it off. I did that three or four times and that resulted in this nice, pretty stain that you can see here. For this part, I've taken some Mod Podge, and as you can see, I've added some water. And that's just to dilute it down a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and mix that up. And it'll be kind of a watery adhesive paste. What this will do is it'll give me a little bit more time to work as I adhere the, the paper letter to the wood. So here's my letter C and my paper cut out for the C. As you can see that fits pretty well. So 
So the first thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and apply some of this diluted mixture to the back. To the back of my letter. The paper will curl some, but it won't matter in the end as long as it doesn't rip. And even if it rips, that would be all right too, depending on the look you were going for. Once I do the letter, I'll do the wood with just again a thin cutout. And you may even be able to see my Mod Podge has a bit of sparkle to it. I got the sparkly kind. That's just my preference. There we go. Once that's done, we'll take and line up the letter carefully to the wood piece. Now it is kind of wet so you want to go slowly and try and get it down correctly the first time. Although if you needed to you could lift it up. Now once that's done, I'll take my credit card and just kind of smooth it out. Make sure that I don't have any bubbles. And we look good. And so there you have it. There's the letter adhered to the wood. There's a little bit of overlap, but that'll be okay. Take the letter and just sand the edges. This will take care of these overhangs that I have. I'll rip off any of these pieces that have come off. Come loose from the sanding. We need to sand again here. You can see there's still a piece here. Flip that up and see if I can't get it off. There we go. And I'll sand once again. After sanding the edges, we can see that there's no longer any overlap. The front still looks good. So once your Mod Podge has been given time to set, you'll have a letter with no bubbles and the paper completely adhered. In this case, you can see that mine overlapped a little bit on each edge where I didn't cut it perfectly, but that won't matter in the end. So for this step, what we're gonna do is take our Mod Podge and just cover the surface. Now I happen to get Glitter Mod Podge because I wanted to have a little bit of sparkle. But we'll just apply a thin layer to coat the top. Now don't worry, this Mod Podge will dry clear. In my case, it'll dry with a sheen, but any white that you may see on the video will be clear once it's completely dried. And so we'll just want a nice even application all the way around the letter. Now you'll note that we won't need to do any smoothing at this step. Reason being, we already did that when we adhered the paper. 
And so if we just apply a thin coat, we shouldn't have to worry about any additional bubbling at all. Once this portion is done, we'll just wait and let it dry, and then we'll proceed to the next step. So in this video, we've covered how to take a plain wood letter from the craft store, stain it, apply a piece of scrapbooking paper with Mod Podge, apply a second coat of Mod Podge to the top, you can even do a second or third coat, sand the edges to remove anything loose on the ends. The next step would be to apply a polyacrylic sealer. I would apply three to four coats. Since these for my facility are going outside, that will provide weather protection. And even in an indoor barn where you may put on the stall fronts or otherwise get these wet, it'll provide an element of protection. The way that you would attach these would differ based on your individual situation. If you had wooden stall fronts, you could apply a bracket here, either a hook so that you could put a nail in it, or you could apply a picture hanger, any, something like that. For my particular case, I have wire stall fronts. I have uh, turnout paddocks with chain link, and I have pipe stalls with stud mesh. And so what I'll probably wind up doing is taking something like a cordless drill and drilling a hole here or at the top, bottom, and then fixing it to the stall with either wire or some kind of rope or cording um, and that way it wouldn't also we have very high winds and so by attaching at the top and bottom I wouldn't have to worry about it fluttering around and breaking or what have you. Thank you for watching this video blog produced by HelpfulHorsemans.com. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and visit our website at www dot helpfulhorsens dot com